Hello, and welcome back to the Radio Mechanic. Today I'm going to dive in to my old LaCroix LC584 AL 1 gig oscilloscope. I don't know if you can see what the monitor is doing or not, but it's got a jitter. It's jumping up and down. And it's been doing this for a while. I don't use this very often. I typically just go to my Tektronix analog 400 megahertz. But if you're working on a piece of gear that's uh, 450, 460 megahertz, like a 70 centimeter ham rig, you typically want a digital scope that's at least twice the bandwidth of what you're working on to get a decent display out of it. So I picked this thing up quite a few years ago now. In fact, its last Cal date shows 2008. And it was good for a year or two, and then the display started to jitter like this a little bit. And since I used it so seldom, I only, uh, I didn't even bother looking at it. I went ahead and plugged in a monitor in the back. And it's got a VGA output on the back, and I just use a, an inexpensive monitor that I had laying around because I only use it every once in a while. But I had it on the other day just to check everything out now that I'm setting the benches back up. And the display actually blanked out. It went black, shrunk, you know, shrunk, went black, came back, and I said, hmm, something's dying in there. And I don't want it to go up and smoke. I'm guessing at the age of this scope, it's probably overdue for a uh, recapping on the CRT monitor. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised the whole scope needed it, but I'm not going to dig into that right now. But the display unit should be removable. I looked online briefly. They want like $500 just for the CRT display unit. I could go with an LCD display and graph that in something that's just a standard VGA because there is a you know this monitor runs on a VGA input. It's real simple. It's just a, a color display is all it is, standard VGA display. The trouble is the most of the LCD monitors you see are in that aspect ratio similar to the monitor up here. And while it's a fine display on that monitor, when it's in here, you end up with a dead band here and here. It ends up being too small to fill the window. So I figured I'd give this a go. What the heck? If, uh, if I can fix it, terrific. If I can't, I can always go the LCD route. The uh, scope itself seems to be working just fine. I ran a calibration on it. In fact, if you listen, you can hear this thing self-calibrate. Come on, do it. When you're running these things, the, the relays will all of a sudden go clickety-clack, clickety-clack, and the display stops just for an instant while it goes through a self-check routine. All of these LaCroix, okay, just did it. Tickety-tick. So everything, you know, the scope itself's working fine, but that display, the fact that it blanked out on me a couple times kind of bothers me. And again, I don't want it to go up in smoke if I can avoid it. I'm hesitant to do this because this thing is a beast. It is heavy as sin. It's got a built-in printer. It's, you know, it just weighs a ton. But I'm going to have to pull it down, get it on the bench, and rip it apart. So let's move forward here. Okay, here we are two hours later. My VED disease is getting much, much worse as I get older. And five projects later, <laughs> I'm back to this. I, have, I remembered it being a beast, and it's all of that. Uh, it felt like 50 pounds lifting it down here, so I looked it up. It's 44 pounds of oscilloscope. Good God, the thing is heavy. But, now that it's off the top of my 8657A signal generator, maybe I'll get around to changing the noisy fan on the back of that thing. I've been avoiding it simply because this scope was sitting on top of it, and it was just such a hassle to take the thing down. But 
once I get the scope fixed, if I can fix it, we'll see about throwing a quieter, newer fan back in, in the back of the uh, Hewlett Packard because that thing drives me crazy. Alrighty, I'm going to get a bunch of screws out of this and we'll move on. And in case anybody wants to know how to get inside of one of these beasts, it's not obvious. First of all, this seems fairly obvious, and it is. There's four feet on the back corner, and there's a little rubber insert plug that goes inside of there that's, you know, the actual foot. You peel that out, take the screws out that are in the middle of the plastic foot. Step one. Step two, and this part is not nearly as obvious because it looks for all the world like this will simply slide back. Well, it won't. <laughs> Underneath the front, there are three screws. Are we in frame here? Okay, there's three screws under the front panel. Once those three screws are out, or actually all you have to do is loosen them, the plastic is slotted. You have to tease this thing out of here. Let me get a spudger. And you'll want to be careful because it's somewhat fragile along this edge. You don't want to break anything. There are tabs. Come on, release. There's one. There's another one. And when you do that, then this little plastic frame or bezel or whatever you want to call it removes. You don't have to take any of the knobs off at this stage. Then, once you've done that, get your back in frame here. You've got screws along the front and down the side on both sides. Here, here, across the top, and down the other side. Those all have to be removed. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and slide the cover off. For those of you used to Tektronics and most other scopes where the cover slides back, this doesn't slide back. It pulls up, Oop. pulls up and off. And then you have to disconnect all the printer goodies. There's that. And yeah. Ooh, ooh, easy killer. Easy killer. Woo. Now we're starting to get into the guts. You know, guess I didn't break the humidity sensor. And this little darling right here is the CRT enclosure and this I remember this the more I get off of here the more I remember that this is a PIA to get out of here to take apart so I think in fact I'm pretty sure I have to remove the bottom cover as well to get to some of the screws yeah so the screws along the side to remove the bottom cover we'll get those off as well as the screws along each side you got screws in the bottom things built like a Swiss watch oh it's built in Switzerland no wonder it's built like a Swiss watch these were actually built in Switzerland believe it or not okay I'm gonna finish getting okay, screws. I think I might have misled you here uh, screwed the pooch as it were I don't think I have to take the bottom off, and if you can avoid that, you probably want to. The control board slash motherboard with all the memory and microprocessor, yada yada, plugs in to this pan on the bottom. This has all of your input circuitry, all of your amplifiers and attenuators, and all the front end circuitry, your A to D converters, that's all in this pan on the bottom. And this motherboard plugs into it here. So if you remove this, you've got to take the motherboard out first, which isn't a big deal. You just take the connectors off, pull the board out. 
<clears throat> but I don't think I have to because looking back down in there, I think I can get the screws out to get this box out of here. I've had this apart completely once to blow all the dust out of it. Uh, when, the, when the CRT first started acting up, I took the whole thing apart and cleaned it. It was just filthy inside. It's actually pretty clean in there now. Uh, that, this doesn't get a whole lot of use. But while I'm in here, I will probably change this lithium backup battery. I believe they use that to retain the calibration information. Now, I could be wrong, <clears throat> but I'm sure that battery's got to be approaching the end of its life. And what I'll do is trace out where that uh, battery appears on the board and probably tack solder a couple of pieces of wire and provide three volts to keep everything alive while I take the battery off the board. Now you got to be really, really ultra careful doing this. You don't want to short anything and have an ultra disaster. But if that's where my Cal data is, and I believe these are a couple of uh, EEPROMs, I'd have to look up the part numbers, but I believe the cal data, calibration data for the scope is kept alive by those batteries. And again, that battery is ancient. It's got to be nearing the end of its life. So I think it would be a smart move, even though there's a risk involved, to change that battery out. So I'm going to hang a couple of screws back in here because I don't think I have to pull that bottom off and I'd rather not do that disturb. You know, I want to disturb as little as I can. This is the VGA cable for the CRT monitor. There's uh, a VGA input over there. There's also a um, power cord, 115 on a connector. And there's another cable on the back. We have our brightness. Can you see that? Yeah, I guess you can. On the back, we have our brightness, our contrast, our vertical hold, all the nonsense you have with your normal uh, CRT type stuff. That's on a board that's mounted to the back, so I've got to remove this board from the back to take the whole unit out of the machine. So we'll get that done. And, and again, uh, I lied to you. Uh, you only have to take this board out if you want to try to operate it on the bench. There is a 9-pin, a DB9 connector here that will disconnect this backboard. It's been so long since I've had this thing apart. But uh, get this printer cable out of the way. We've got our VGA. That does have to get disconnected. And the power cord on the other side, power connector. In fact, I can swing this thing around and show you that. I've already unplugged the, uh, the rear controls. Get that done. Let me turn this around. Okay, here we have our 9-pin connector, DB9 connector. I think it's a DB9. Nope, it's a DB15. I lied to you again. See that? Horrible. Terrible. Can't trust me for a minute. So it's a DB15. That unplugs. That disconnects this board with all the pots on it. Yeah, and that's our AC power. We've got a screw here, a screw there. I believe to get this out of here, if I remember correctly, and it's been a while, I'm going to have to remove this aluminum frame. I believe I have to take the um, moisture detector, the condensation detector out as well before I can get the CRT out. I might have to unplug and remove the button board, I'm not sure. But when I get there, I'll fill okay. you in. I've gone ahead and removed the main control board just to make it life a little easier and to make it safer for the board. There is a couple of screws back here that you need to access to get that front frame off. They're right in here. I don't know if we got enough light. They're right down in here. Now you can loosen the two screws on the disk drive and slide that out of the way and work down in the hole but I just figured it was safer to have that board unplugged it just lifts up you just pull the connectors lift the board out and set it to the side the only tricky part is getting around this guide for the SD card the big old-fashioned SD type card there 
So we'll loosen the two screws up down here. What's nice is a lot of this stuff is slotted so that it'll slide forward. And I'm hoping that's all I need to do at this point. Oh, there's a couple over here as well. Look at that. Everything's on slots. You loosen all the screws up. It should come apart. Are you going to come out now or are you going to make a wire out of me? Or do I still have to pull the bottom? No, nope, it's still interfering. I guess the bottom does have to come off. So I'll go back to my original statement that says remove the bottom. <laughs> and again, it's been, I'll bet it's been 10 years since I opened this thing up. So, And I don't have a service manual for it. I wish I did. But the last time I checked the price on them, they were very, very pricey. I would like to check the voltages on the power supply. That would be a good idea. But I don't even know where the test points are. Uh, there's probably, they probably all appear here somewhere. If I had the service manual, but the heck. I'm going to go after the CRT because I'm pretty sure that's where the problem is. I'm sure all of this stuff here is more or less associated with running the scope because this has its own internal power source running on 120 volts. So the scope's not giving me any issues. So that's probably all fine. I'm just going to ignore it. We'll get the bottom cover off now that the uh, motherboard's all right, on. Now that all the screws are lined up, you've got to tease this frame out from behind this piece. There's a bunch of screw heads down here that make it a little bit difficult, but with a little finagling, it lifts out. So there's our button board. Now we should have access to get that CRT out of there. I'm going to go set this aside in a safe location along with the motherboard. Okay. I've loosened the two screws on the back of the CRT and if you lift the nose up a little bit and pull it forward, it comes out. This thing's a real joy to work on. And what you have left in here is all your front end and A to D stuff underneath this panel. Power supply, fan, and the board for the the uh, brightness, contrast, yada yada. Oh, I'd forgotten it had that in it. Little uh, fan control as it gets hot, it'll speed up. Nice, nice attention to detail, guys. The power switch is back here. The button's in the front, but it's got one of these long arms that runs all the way to the back. Yeah, it's still pretty clean in here. Hardly any dust at all. So, I am going to set this aside, set the CPU card, motherboard aside, get that off the bench, give me some room to work, and we'll tear into the uh, display unit and see what we can find. Okay, and what we have left on the table is the CRT unit. Now, the first time I took this thing out, I looked at how it was put together. There was just no way to work on it live in any practical fashion. You'd need some kind of a fixture or a jig. If I remember correctly, to get inside of this, you have to take all the screws out and the CRT kind of flops forward and the circuit, uh, I don't know, we'll have to get in there. I just remember that this was virtually impossible to work on and test while you were working on it, unless you had fixturing to hold everything. And I thought this was a humidity sensor. I thought it was like a bunch of fingers and if the moisture got in there, it would change the resistance. But I've just noticed that two of these have been soldered over. So I might be all wet <laughs> on guessing as to what that is. I was pretty sure the first time I saw it, it was for sensing humidity and inhibiting the thing coming on. Uh, if the you know, there'd been a big temperature change and there was moisture. So I don't know what that is. My guess had been, like I say, originally it was a humidity sensor. Those are all paralleled. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody's cut the thing. Uh, where's my loop? Where did I put my loop? Right here just a minute ago. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe those are just scratches. It looked like somebody had cut the traces. I spoke too soon. But give you a close up of those. Let me move the camera over here. Don't you hate those handheld shots? Bring it down a little bit closer so you can see what this thing looks like. And come up here. I think this will focus right down on them. Yeah, I was positive these were was or this was some kind of humidity sensor, but I don't know. I don't know what it is. You can see how there's like little fingers from each side that come in. And my assumption had been if there was any moisture in there, it would change the resistance and it would sense it. But you can see here, these have been soldered together. And if we come over to the other side, we've got the same thing over here. Now there's two separate units. So I don't know what those are. Haven't got a clue at this point as to why that would have solder on them. All right, I'm going to take some more than talking to myself again camera wasn't turned on if you try to get in here to work on this you've got a U shoot you you shooped Blah, easy for me to say U shaped sheet metal panel it goes around here that carries the printed circuit board so you have no access whatsoever to the bottom of the board it's blank sheet metal the CRT is not connected in any way to the PC board. The only thing the CRT is connected to is four screws on the corners holding it here. So if you take those out, the CRT flops forward. So to try to work on this on the bench, you'd have to have the CRT flopping around on the bench with the board flopping around on the bench and this daughter board flopping around on the bench which just unplugs from the neck of the CRT. But you'd end up with three independent pieces just flopping around on the board and every time you try to turn the PC board over you'd have to flop the CRT over and this is why I gave up working on this. When I first opened it up I took one look inside of this and I said screw that and I plugged in the other monitor. And I've been using the other monitor ever since but I think what I'm going to do is just go in here and shotgun this thing with capacitors. There's a million of them in here. And when I get the boards out, you'll see. But I've got no way to power this up on the bench. I will take my ESR meter and just go around and start checking caps and see if I can find anything obvious wrong with this. I have no starting place. I, I don't have a, I thought it was a Sanyo and maybe I read that somewhere online, but it says made in Taiwan and Sanyo is Korean. And again, uh, I guess I said it when the camera wasn't on. There's a sticker in here. That's Korean. I don't know what it says, but it looks like an inspector stamp. Maybe just the CRTs made in Korea and shipped to Taiwan for assembly. I don't know. I don't know who makes it. I haven't got a clue. But I do have a model number. Let me throw the model number in. Oh, incidentally, I threw them part number of this on the internet. Got a transformer and if this is a repeat it's because I'm not sure if the camera was running when I set it the first time or not. Two turn transformer going to the front where all these little sensors whatever they are are located and on the primary you got one two three four five six looks like seven or eight turns They go to the connector internally and that connects somewhere down there on the board for the monitor so I have no idea what that does none whatsoever uh, I don't know don't know what to tell you we do have a degaussing coil in here but those are usually operated by a thermistor or you know something they, they come on for a while when you first turn the set on and then the thermistor warms up shuts down and stops the coil from producing a magnetic field again but uh, yeah I don't know don't know no clue I'm gonna try to get this thing out of here and start checking caps with an ESR Here's where we are so far 
CRT is sitting over there. It is on a paper towel, so any scratchy stuff on the desk hopefully won't get on the face. It was Celastic holding the connectors to this board, and this stuff was so tough that I destroyed a spudger tool getting it to come off. Now I'm going to take the PC board out of here. But as you can see, everything's in pieces. It's as if the design team sat down and said, what can we do to make this thing absolutely unserviceable so that they have to buy a new one? Incredible. I can't get there. That oh, Maybe I can get beside it. Oh, that screw's not even close to tight. It was a couple of turns up in the air. Not surprising, I guess. I just went online and ran the model number for this and tried different, you know, different, several different methods of searching and came up with the uh, Black & Decker drills. Uh, what else? Oh, several other items that were absolutely unrelated to CRTs anyway. I do remember going on Flea Bay when this happened several years ago when it started getting jittery and there were some monitors available they were poles quote-unquote untested and they were asking 500 bucks for them so at the time I said screw that and connected plug the monitor into the back of it and I may end up doing that again but I figured what the heck I'll throw it on the bench I'll go through look for the obvious Maybe I'll get lucky, maybe I won't, but this is a pretty involved piece. I'm sure somebody out there knows where the schematics are available for it. But to be honest with you, the lack of ability to be, do any testing on the bench just kind of makes me somewhat uninterested in even trying. Oh, there's one in the middle somewhere, I see it. Ah, there it is. It's hiding behind the flyback transformer. Get you out of there. Now ah, it should come out. What did I miss? Did I not take one all the way out? That's out, that's out. What's holding it? Come on. No, that's not connected. Well, I had all the screws. Maybe it's just stuck. Hmm. Ah. I'm going to have to pull a big clive and use unreasonable force. Well, maybe there's a couple more turns on that screw. Boy, I sure thought I felt it. Come to the top. <coughs> Excuse me. Top of the threads. Yeah, that's out. What the heck is keeping it? Oh, the stupid thing. Now oh, what's keeping it? Come on, come on! What a freaking horror show. Okay. These will have to be pulled out of here if I want the thing to lay flat on the desk. You can see what I'm up against. If you're trying to work on this, there's just no way to do it under power. It's just virtually impossible. I mean, you'd be flopping the CRT over. And, uh. So even if I had schematics for it, I don't think they'd be helpful. I'm sure, like I say, back at the factory, they've probably got extension cables and, and fixtures, you know, something holding a CRT and extra long cables so that they can lay the boards out and tweak everything. Other than that, I can't see any way of trying to work on this thing. I'm just going to uh, shotgun any capacitor that doesn't measure up on uh, ESR. Look over the solder joints, make sure, I, you know, see if I can find anything on the solder joints that look cold or... Who knows? I'll stick it under the microscope and take a good look. At this point, I'm going to shut the camera down and go after capacitors.
You don't need to watch me for three hours doing that. And one last look before I tear into this thing. Now you can see what I'm really up against. Half the cabling is still over there. This has to go on the back of the CRT, which is laying over there. This has to plug into the CRT. All of these interconnects have to run, and, and there's a bunch of them over here, as well as all the controls that were mounted on the back of the oscilloscope frame, your brightness, your contrast, yada, yada. There's just no way to work on this on the bench unless you've got all the tooling and all the fixturing and the extension cables. And like I say, don't even bother trying to find a schematic for this. I wouldn't even dream of trying to power this thing up on the bench and do any circuit tracing. It, I'll look for bad caps. I'll change the ones I find. If I find any that don't meet ESR specs, I'll look for bad solder joints. If that doesn't fix it, to hell with it. I will start looking around for a uh, uh, LCD panel, color LCD, you know, to replace the CRT with because it just it's not worth it and I'm certainly not going to give them 500 bucks for one of these in an unknown condition I'll uh, I'll buy a 30 or 40 dollar LCD panel VGA compatible and just plug it in and be okay. done with it we're in the process of putting this beast back together I did not find any kind of smoking gun I found about five uh, yeah, I think it was five capacitors that were a little bit high on ESR but nothing alarming I touched up oh, a couple dozen solder joints inside there and I don't believe I've done anything at all to correct the problem it could be almost anything. When I used to do TV servicing way back in the day, you'd get a problem like that. You could spend hours tracking down an intermittent resistor, intermittent capacitor, intermittent transistors, you know, stuff that's right on the verge of failing, but it could take you hours and hours and hours. There was one set I fixed for my cousin that had been in, <clears throat> excuse me, three shops prior to mine and they couldn't fix it and it was a portable black and white TV if it hadn't been my cousin I would have simply told her forget it don't even bring it in here but because it was family I said I'll see what I can do I think I put 20 hours into that set before I found an intermittent resistor that was hiding out of sight behind a capacitor and what had happened, you throw a blanket over the TV and play it for a couple of hours and the picture would blank out. And you whip the blanket off the top and get in there and start checking before you could find the problem. It would cool down enough that it would turn back on. Of course, when the cover was on it, it would just blank out and stay out until you left it off overnight. Uh, like I say, I don't think I've accomplished anything. That's plugged in, that's plugged in. Let's spin this around here, make sure I've got... Oh, 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 while I'm right here. This battery. It's a 3-volt rechargeable, of all things. Right now it's reading about 1.6 volts. It's on its very last legs. It's still keeping the memory alive, but it's not going to be much longer before it fails entirely. The good news is... I found them on Amazon. The bad news is they're 50 bucks. If that had just been a standard 3 volt lithium, it probably would have been 5 or 6 dollars. But because it's rechargeable, it's a 50 dollar battery. I'm going to look around a little bit see if I can get that price down some, but I'm going to have to buy one. I'm going to have to bite the bullet or I'm going to lose my calibration. And yes, it hasn't been calibrated since 08, but I've got enough equipment here that I can verify the voltage readings on this are correct, as is the time base, at least good enough for my purposes. Okay, uh, 
here we go let's hope the smoke doesn't leak out let's hope I don't have any solder bridges let's find out let's see what happens turn this towards you swing this back no smoke yet that's encouraging the display is coming up And so far, no jitter, but that doesn't offer much encouragement because this has been intermittent off and on for many years. It would come and go, come and go. So have I disturbed something or soldered a joint that fixed it? Or have I replaced a capacitor that fixed it? I doubt it. I've got my finger on the trigger. I found a 10.1 inch diagonal display, which I should be able to shoehorn in here. This is a 10 and a half inches diagonal on the tube. I found a 10, actually it's 10.1 is what they list the LCD display at. Of course, it's gonna have a little gap at the top and the bottom, but I guess I could probably 3D print something to fit in there. We'll let it go for a while and see what happens. But so far, so good. I'll probably leave all the covers off of this puppy for now and wait for the battery to come in. In fact, I should go press the button and pull the trigger on that. Uh, place your order. Ta-da! So that order is placed. Battery will be here the 14th. Because of the holiday, things are going to be a little bit slow. Come on, you gonna shake and shudder and jump up and down anymore? Got my fingers crossed, but again, I seriously doubt I have actually fixed it. Time will tell. I'll be real happy if it is fixed. That means I don't have to order an LCD display. And the monitor is going to be uh, working correctly again I can get rid of that VGA monitor that's sitting up on top of it. What did I do with my cable? You guys see where I put it down? It's gotta be around here. Whoa! No, that's not what I want. Uh, I wish you guys would keep track of this stuff for me. I get so easily... Oh, this one will work. Not a real good one, but it should work. Let's see here. Uh, I gotta remember how to drive this thing now. It's been, oh, ta, ta da, there it is, it woke right up. It remembered the settings. Beautiful, here it calibrate, chicka chick. That'll do it again. Beautiful. The uh, jitter would actually, it made, I, I'm very prone to motion sickness, and when it would start jittering like that, it would actually make me seasick after a few looks. But uh, no, the color's good and bright. I don't know how it's coming across on the camera. I guess it looks all right. There's a little bit of shutter roll in it. That's not on the screen. That's just because of the shutter rate versus the screen refresh. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Maybe I got lucky. Maybe one of those solder joints I touched, maybe one of the capacitors I replaced did something. I seriously doubt it though. Anyway, that just about wraps this up. I'm gonna throw the covers back on it, set this aside, and then uh, dig into the signal generator and swap the fan out. I doubt that would make an interesting video of any kind at all. I'll just do that and take care of it, put that back up on the shelf with a quieter fan in it. I'm so sick of listening to that fan screech. So that's it for this one. I'm the radio mechanic. Thanks for riding along. Thanks for keeping track of my stuff for me. Keeping me on track. I'll throw the uh, non-functional disk drive back in. <laughs> it's funny. Every one of these that I've encountered, the disk drive doesn't work on it for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of the ones advertised on eBay say disk drive not functional. And a buddy of mine just was gonna pick one up from somebody, disk drive non-functional. They seem to, uh, I don't know who they bought the disk drives from. Uh, let's see, what does it say on it? Citizen. 
is what this one says made in China but uh, yeah it seems like just about every one of these has a dead disk drive not that I would use it okay that's it we're gonna wrap it up see you later bye